Felix, uh, you performed a study, quite interesting study, here at Karolinska Institutet. What is this all about? Well, I work with sarcomas, which is a very rare form of cancer, uh, and it's very difficult to diagnose using conventional methods like microscopy. So we, we also know that sarcomas, they have uh, associated genetic alterations, which there is a quite strong correlation between the uh, the genomic profile or genomic finding and the, the subtype of tumor we have. So we wanted to study how an, an extremely comprehensive form of genetic profiling would aid us in our day-to-day -day diagnostics of, of these rare tumors. And did it help you? Absolutely, yes. We, we believed before the study that it would, but I think we were surprised in, to the extent it actually helped us. What surprised you most of the study? Well, I, it's, it's a new way of looking at the tumor. So I have a genetic background, but of course, gaining that information and, and sort of um, understanding of the tumor helped me a lot to, to uh, understand the tumor from a wider perspective or from another perspective. So it's not only what subtype of tumor it is, it could help us understand why the tumor rose uh, and also uh, what kind of treatments the tumor could, could respond to. What results did uh, the study show? Well, basically about 10% of all our cases were reclassified only based on the genomic findings. And uh, of course, this number will change depending on which cases you sequence. Uh, in our case, we, we sequenced quite a lot of tumors. So if we would sequence just the very, the, the most difficult tumors, that number would naturally be higher. But we, we included quite a broad range of tumors. But we, we also found that some cases where we were quite certain about the diagnosis, it still got revised from genetics. And that told us that we, well, we had to improve our diagnostics, but it was also difficult beforehand to know what you would find using this method. So before, a lot of people had the wrong diagnostics and then the wrong treatment. Can you say that? Yes. But then again, we, we know beforehand that this is a very difficult tumor to diagnose and to type. So this is, this is well known. So it's not surprising that uh, additional information helped you in classifying the tumors. We, we talk a lot ab about uh, over-treatment in Sweden. Is this a way of helping over-treatment? Well, the correct treatment starts with the correct diagnosis, so sure. Uh, in our material, we, we didn't have cases that were the genetics argued for a more malignant case than, it was, than we described. It was rather that the, the genetics downgraded tumors to a more, if you say, benign tumor. Some were completely benign, uh, but some were also low-grade tumors with a, a very low rate of metastasis. And those cases we, we generally don't treat. It's a watchful waiting. So some patients had, you told them that, okay, we found out you don't have cancer. Yes. Really? Yes, about 5 to 6% actually of all the cases. But that's a lot. Yes, I, I agree. It's a lot. Now this will be standard uh, pr practice in, in, for sarcoma patients at uh, Karolinska Universitets Hospital. Um, why? The data that we published speak for themselves. We have run, since the publication, we have run um, almost twice the number of cases and the, the number still holds. And I should say that there are a couple of other institutions in the world that have tried this and published this and their numbers are similar to ours. So we, we really believe that in our setting, it, it's going to help a lot of patients. And it's also going to improve the, the quality of uh, the diagnostics. So the genetics, it helps you to get an immediate feedback on your histopathological classification, what we see in the microscope. 
So uh, you you instantly get this this uh, if you're wrong or if you're right, you get corrected or affirmed, and in that sense you become much more uh, tuned and also uh, uh, you you um, you trust yourself in in your work. I remember when my daughter had um, sarcoma. You know, she after six months she 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 died. Uh, I remember the chemo was so heavy, and I see many sarcoma patients with that don't have any um, have a leg missing or an arm missing. Is this a way of changing the patient's uh, journey? Does, how does this affect the patient? Of course, if you change the diagnosis, the journey will be extremely different. Uh, but I, I hope that down the line, in a few years, we will be able to tell uh, perhaps how, how sensitive a tumor is to chemotherapy based on additional research and data. So I really hope to be able to say which patients will respond or at least have a higher chance of responding. And as importantly as the ability to say who, who don't respond. Because if you have a terminal illness, uh, you don't want to take away the last part of your life with an aggressive treatment that doesn't give you any benefits. Finally, that's that's always up to the treating oncologist and the patient. Um, but we want to uh, give everyone as good information as possible. Uh, I heard that uh, in the beginning of this uh, project, uh, not everybody were positive. And during the project, uh, things were changing. Can, can you tell me a, bit, a little bit more about that? Yeah, I, I think doctors in general have a skepticism towards new approaches. And I think that can be very healthy, uh, not to jump on every sort of opportunity to do stuff. Uh, this is something that is very different from how we normally work. And I think with that came sort of a a skepticism, how is this going to affect the way I work and the way I diagnose patients. But as the project came along, we didn't need to persuade anyone because uh, everyone sort of saw how good the method was. And after a while, people started to come to my office and asking, oh, is the genetics ready yet? Because I want to sign out the case and I want to see the genetics before I sign out the case. So it really changed the way we work. We know from, from other tumor types that if you have certain genetic uh, aberrances or, or changes, you are more prone to respond to certain therapies. Uh, and if we, are, if we find similar variations or mutations in sarcomas, uh, we can try those therapies for those patients. Uh, since sarcomas are so rare, we will never be able to do these large randomized trials, which are generally required to have the highest level of evidence for treatment. But when we're talking about rare tumor types, we, there is a consensus that we, we can't really get that sort of evidence. So um, this genomic profiling can help us uh, try new therapies. Of course, in a very structured and controlled manner. Uh, but I, I, I really hope that it will allow more patients to get into new clinical trials and, and uh, get new uh, medications as well. This uh, study must have been taken a lot of time for you and uh, you into other projects and have a lot to do. What mo motivates you in all this? That's an interesting question. I mean... We, um, by heart, I'm, a, I'm not only a doctor, I'm a researcher. So uh, I think it's only natural to strive after understanding what you're doing. Uh, and um, I actually choose to work with sarcomas just because they were, these are rare and difficult cases. And I think there is a, a beauty in understanding what is difficult and rare. Um, and I really think that uh, there are so many questions and uh, to, to be answered uh, 
other tumor types, they don't really have these great unknowns yet. And I think uh, in sarcoma, there are still so many things to discover. And, uh, and uh, the part of me that is a researcher really enjoys that, um, to be able to discover new things. Thank you for what you're doing for, for us, because it's so important for so many.